Russian President Vladimir Putin made a rare in-person appearance at a meeting of his Security Council for the first time since he invaded Ukraine in February. Well, aside from a brief clip of the meeting that aired on state television showing Mr. Putin with key members of his inner circle, the rest of the discussion took place behind closed doors. Well, this comes as Ukraine has seen has been rather under a barrage of missile strikes, many of them targeting its energy infrastructure. CNN contributor and former CNN Moscow Bureau Chief Jill Doherty joins me now from Washington, D.C. She's also an adjunct professor at Georgetown University. So good to see you, Jill. A number mm -hmm. of Ukrainian cities, including the capital, Kiev, have come under attack from Russian missiles again, hitting critical uh, energy infrastructure. Ukrainian President Zelensky is now warning that up to 10 million people are in the dark with no power. Now, the prime minister is warning that the capital could face a complete shutdown of its power grid, just as temperatures are expected to drop uh, to minus 10 degrees Celsius. What's your read on Mr. Putin's plan hitting now critical civilian infrastructure in this phase of the war? You know, this is obviously, Leila, part of his plan both to uh, decimate the possibility that Ukraine can really respond very strongly. After all, this is affecting any type of power, and that affects civilians as well as the military, but especially civilians. And then I think also what he's doing is sending a message to the West, you know, that the price that you're going to pay for supporting Ukraine is going to be very, very high. So it's really a, a dastardly uh, approach to, you know, attacking civilians. But that is the war that he is waging right now. So uh, it's very difficult because even though they try, and I saw some reports that they have been very quickly trying to restore power in many cases, it's going to be a very brutal and difficult winter for Ukrainians. Uh, in a striking development, Jill, uh, Russian state uh, television aired images of Russian President Vladimir Putin at uh, a meeting of his Security Council, uh, the first uh, since a long time, since February, when this all uh, uh, began, especially coming after the setback in Kherson. What message do you think this is meant to send? Well, you know, when he was um, when he was last at personally at a meeting with the Security Council, it was precisely, as you said, at the beginning of the war. And then after that, he would participate, but he'd participate virtually. And of course, there was a lot of concern and a lot of protection for President Putin in terms of COVID. They've been very, very worried about exposing him to anything. You remember those pictures of him at the very long table. Well, I think physically being there is probably a sign to show that he's on the case. He is, you know, talking with the uh, with his security council that he's controlling things. I think it's a symbol of what they're trying to get across is some type of stability and strength on the part of the president. I know it's very difficult to gauge, but do we have any way of knowing whether there is dissent within his inner circle, especially seeing what has happened in this past week? Yeah, that is always hard to gauge. I mean, we do know that there there is some second thought. There are some second thoughts about this among some members of the elite. But when you get into Putin's inner circle, it's very hard to say precisely what is going on. Uh, and that, that is one of the problems is his inner circle is very small, or at least we are led to believe that, that the people really he is surrounded by are people from security forces, from the military, and, uh, you know, police, uh, police, uh, FSB, et cetera. So to the, a lot of those people obviously, you know, are many times on the side of Putin in terms of really taking the war to the Ukrainians and sometimes even harsher than Mr. Putin himself. But uh, it, it's very hard to gauge that. We do know, however, that we have some people in the business community who have spoken out. And certainly there is some, you know, protest, diminishing protest among the people themselves.
And in conclusion, Dill, what does the state of play on the battlefield do for the influence of oligarchs like uh, Yevgeny Prigozhin, whose Wagner group of mercenary is now literally on the front lines? Well, I mean, with Prigozhin and uh, the Wagner group, I think it, it gives him, you know, business. Uh, his people are being hired to fight, but also it gives him some political clout. He already had it. But now in the war, he's a very important element of the way that the Russians are, uh, are fighting this war. So I think his influence has, certainly has increased. That would be one thing. And, but, you know, w whether or not that really is what's driving things, perhaps, it is. But I think a lot of this is simply driven by Putin himself, who shows no sign of going back. You know, there's a debate in the United States right now in the Biden administration as to whether or not, uh, you know, they would urge Ukraine to come to the negotiating table. And I think, you know, the division there is that some people feel the Ukrainians actually have been doing very well. And maybe now is the time to lock in some of those gains. But there are others who look, as we've just been discussing, at this, you know, prospect of the very long war and say, well, you know, the Ukrainians ought to just continue, but we cannot tell them what to do. That's the mantra from this administration. And the phrase, you know, again, is uh, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. And they continue to say they really mean it. Jill Doring.